Hey guys, I I really appreciate you being with me today, uh, this morning. It's really awesome to be with you. And um, it's really awesome to be with you today. And I had a whole sermon plan, but God just um, before I get into that sermon plan, um, God just wanted me to sh share with you what just happened. Uh, first, I need to explain the setup of my, my wheelchair. As most of you who know me know, I'm, I have a disability called cerebral palsy, um, and cerebral palsy affects uh, people in many different ways. And some people on the cerebral palsy spectrum, you could hardly tell. And some people uh, can, you can really tell they, they are, um, um, they can't speak, they can't do anything, like, not do anything, I shouldn't say that, they can't, um, communicate or be by themselves. I fall in the middle, I'm kind of, um, I'm fully able to speak, obviously, because I come on here every week, um, but I need help with like dressing and stuff like that. So, um, because of my disability, I'm in a wheelchair. And on my chair, it's really cool. On my chair, there is, there are two modes. There, there is drive mode and there is, um, there is mouse mode, so so right now I'm in mouse mode because I and what that allows me to do is is with the click of a button control my my computer mouse with my chair. So right now I'm in mouse mode. So. So I can move my mouse, like which I'm doing now, and you can't see, but I can move my mouse um, right there around the screen, and with a click of a button, um, I can. It says it makes a little beeping sound, and I can use the same toggle. To move my chair. Okay, today and okay, so today when I got on my computer, I I went to flip, flip into mouse mode, and I couldn't reach the button to flip into mouse mode. Sometimes it was my disability too. Um, I I get kind of tense and nervous and when I get nervous I can't do things that I should so um so I couldn't reach the button to switch modes I could reach it but I just needed to relax to reach it I was like uh oh what am I going to do I have to do a sermon before church and blah 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 and in my worry and in my stress it just made it worse. And then all of us, not all of a sudden, but the Lord began to sing through me. He, he began to sing when I was stretching and couldn't reach the control. No, no, not the control. I could reach the control, but I couldn't reach um, the mode button to switch it. Um, because 
on my chair before the mode button was here. But I said that I didn't need it there, that they could just uh, put it on the t on the top of the um, control. I would need to show you my chair to show you what I mean, and that's impossible to do now. So, but, so suffice it to say, I couldn't reach the mode button, and I got, and you know, when you get stressed out, um, you get like kind of tense, and so it was making it worse. So I said, Lord, what do I do? And then, and then suddenly the Lord began to sing to me. He said, He said, um, Don't panic, just relax, and keep trying, keep trying. Don't panic, just relax, and keep trying, keep trying. Don't panic. And as I started to sing this song, my muscles started to relax and I was able to reach the mouse mode. And I was able to turn on my computer. Uh, I was able to um, reach the mouse mode. And it was um, so phenomenal. So he wanted me to say to you today, um, he wanted me to say to you what he, 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 he said to me. He said, don't panic, just relax, and keep trying, keep trying. Don't panic, just relax, and keep trying, keep trying. Um, because there's no power in a panic. There's only pressure in a panic. And when you feel pressure, it just kind of sends you crazy. Some people, when they feel pressure, it energizes them. Uh, it makes them go further and push harder. Me, it makes me go crazy and it will be like, oh my gosh, what do I do? And some of you have been panicking and, and just like, oh, what do I do? He said, well, this is, um, he said, don't panic, just relax and keep trying. Some of you doors are slamming in your face and you're about to give up on what God has called you to do or you did what God has called you to do and it didn't seem to work out so you gave up. He said, keep going, keep plugging away, don't give up because he's got a plan in store. So that's my story, my original sermon today was on worship and now that I think of it it ties in because um the Lord gave me a song today when I was going through that situation of not being able to uh reach my um mouse moment button um what I wanted to say about worship is it go worship goes past music and I think the church has got to mature to a place where it worship, worship is not having anything to do with music. Music is a vehicle for worship. It's something that God uses to push 
worship. But what worship usually um, really is is commu- it's divine. It's a divine exchange, a divine communication. It's like prayer, but it's different than prayer in that in worship you're not asking for anything. You are you are subs- ascribing worth to the one who created who created uh, worship himself, which is the Lord. And I think the church has done a really a, a real disservice by 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 thinking that singing is worshiping. Singing is not worshiping. It's a vehicle. This morning, the Lord uses the vehicle of a song to minister to me. He could have just as easily uh, used a ser- use a word, use a sermon to say, relax and keep going, don't give up. But he chose to use the vehicle of a song. Songs and sermons are vehicles for his word. They are not his word in it, in itself. His word um, can be brought in several different ways. It can be brought in a song. It could be brought in a sermon. It could be brought to a friend. Those and several other creative ways that he will reveal to those who can perform them. I think, um, I, I can sense the Lord is saying, I need real worship. I need real worship. He's like, he's like, I don't, he's like, I don't need another song. Songs are vehicles, but it's not actual worship. Worship, what worship is, is ascribing worth or bowing down to um, a being or a deity or anything. Anything you give your time to, any anything you ascribe worth to, you can worship. So you can worship your husband. You can worship your children. You can worship your favorite show. Like, if you're willing, I'm going to get in trouble here, but if you're willing to skip, skip a Sunday of, of streaming church because your favorite online, your favorite show is coming on and you would rather watch Netflix than join in worship in the house of God, that's, um, you're worshiping that, that Netflix show. Um, and the Lord said, I will have no other gods before me. Meaning, it's not just a deity. It's not that, it's not just, um, like th- other religions like Buddhism or Sikhism, you say, why Why are you saying that I'm worshipping Netflix? I'm not worshipping any other gods. I'm not Sikh. I'm not um, a Buddhist. I believe in Jesus. But, but he would say, yes, but who do you give your time to? And I think the church has done a disservice uh, teaching people that worship is a song, like worship music or, you know, um, a worship leader. Listen, nobody can lead you into worship. Nobody can sing you into worship. Worship has to come from you to him. 
So what we've done is called worship leaders and worship songs. There are no such thing, things. What it is, is an atmosphere setting song or an atmosphere, a leader who can set the atmosphere. So no one can lead you into worship, but a song can because it's a vehicle, it can set the atmosphere for worship, and um, a leader can set the atmosphere for worship. It they cannot lead you into worship. Worship has to be uh, personal, in in a co in a corporate setting. Worship still is personal. It's like you're gathering to to ascribe worth to our great God, but you're not. Um, you can't be led into it. There is no song that can um, that can make you worship. It's a vehicle. It can push you. It can drive you to worship, but it's not worship in itself. You know, there's an old song that says, um, I'll give you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required. I think we've, I think we've hidden behind music for a long time. And those of you who know me knows I love music. I love music of all kinds. I'm just a music person, um, but I think we've we've mistakenly think worship is music, and it's not. Music is a vehicle for worship. A sermon can be a vehicle for worship. Um, it's just basically different vehicles to get you um, to get you worshiping to get you. Um, to worship, but they're not worshiping itself. It's like if you take um, a, ty a Toyota and an Audi, they're different vehicles, but they still get you to where you want to go. And I think to ex I, I sense to experience the healings in the um, the signs and wonders that we want to experience, he needs to hear not a song, but he needs to hear our voice. He's missing the voice of his people. He's missing the voice of, of, um, of surrender. He's missing the voice um, of his people. So, so, um, he wants to hear the voice again. He wants, he wants to hear, oh, Lord Jesus, I love you. Lord Jesus, you are awesome. Lord Jesus, we come before you today, Lord, and magnify you. We love you, Lord Jesus. Or, 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 Lord, I just want to say I love you Lord it's cool hanging out with you Lord I just I just want to give you praise I want to give you all of me he wants the voice of worship he likes he loves the vehicle of music and he uses it like he did with me this morning he loves the vehicle of preaching but he wants to hear the voice of the people he wants to hear voices in praise, um, not just songs. And I think we use songs to cover up for worship, and worship is not a song. A song is a vehicle for worship, and it'll take you somewhere, but you still have to um, speak to God. He wants his children to speak to him. Lord, I honor you. Lord, I bless you. Lord, you are awesome. Lord, I just 
want to say thank you. Lord, I just want to worship you today. Lord, you are awesome. Lord, you are a wonderful God. You are a wonderful God. Lord, we honor you today. Lord, I bow before you, Lord Jesus. And I feel your presence here today, God. Thank you for what you're doing, God. We love you. We we love on you today. We we kiss you today, Lord God. We love you. We just bless you and magnify you, Lord. You are holy. You are awesome. You are righteous, God. We bless you today, Lord. We bless you today, God. We honor you today, God. We bless you. We bless you. We lift our voice and and exalt you as King, God. You are the king of our hearts. You are the king of our lives. And we exalt you, God. We we put, proclaim you as great. You are great, God. And we declare today that you are solving, restoring, revealing yourself in a new way. And I declare that your that your people will rise in true worship. That your, pe- that your people will rise in true understanding of who you are. Because worship reveals not just who you are, but who we are, God. Reveal yourself today in churches around the world, from Australia to Africa to Antarctica to North America and South America. Oh, oh Lord Jesus, to Asia. Reveal yourself to us, Lord Jesus. We're standing at a precipice of something great, God. Drench this world, Lord God. We love you. We worship you. We don't ask you for anything, but we tell you that you're a great God. We tell you that you're the God of peace. You, You are always moving, Lord God, and we want to move with you, God. We want to move how you're moving, Lord God. Reveal to us who you are. Reveal to us who we are. And we worship you, God. We go beyond the veil. We go we go beyond what's comfortable, Lord God. And we just want to see you. We just want to worship you, God. We worship you and give you praise, oh God. We worship you and give you just honor. Lord God, we we just honor you today because you deserve all praise and all glory and you deserve to be honored. And we honor you for just being who you are, the matchless, the loving, the righteous, the holy God that you are. And And we give ourselves away today, Lord Jesus. Amen. He wants real worship from his people. He he just doesn't want a song. Songs are great, but real worship is what he wants. And we also have done a disservice by telling people to shake it off. And when they come to church, we just say, say uh, shake the tiredness off, shake everything off. But I sense that he wants, he's saying, don't shake it off. Bring it to me and leave it there. Speak to me about what's really going on. Speak to me. Get down. He said, he said to me the other day, he said, display the dirty. So that means... Let him have it all. You don't need any religious rhetoric or whatever. He said, just let me have it all. I want it all. I need it all. I don't want you to shake it off and just do the religious activity. He's like, I want you to display the dirty and bring it to me. And bring it to me. And really talk about talk to me, go in your closet and talk to me about what's really going on. 
one time I was really struggling uh, with something, and he and he actually walked me through. He didn't say, "Okay, shake it off and turn it off," and that that's it. He actually walked me through why I was feeling that way. He said, "Okay, what are you feeling?" Why are you feeling this? like, tell me what's go? He said, tell me what's going on in your body when you're, when you're, um, when you're tempted with this. When you're, uh, when you're watching a movie and a, and a certain scene comes on, uh, tell me what's going on in your body. And then he said, tell me what's going, no, he said, tell me what's going on in your mind, tell me what's going on in your body, tell me what's going on in your emotions. A lot of times people try and, well, when we're tempted with things, we just say, uh, he'll provide a way of escape and whatever, and we escape, and we escape, but we don't really deal with what we have to deal with. He's saying to display the dirty and just really deal with why, with what's going on. He said, tell me what's going on in your body, uh, in your mind, uh, uh, in your body, in your soul, which is your emotion, mind, will, and emotions. Like, what's going on? What's going on in you when this temptation is happening? So let's say uh, you, you you like sex and you're watching a movie with a heavy sex scene. He will he 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 might say, okay, instead of just turn that off and uh, take out your Bible and try and calm down, he said to me, okay, Rachel, what's going on in in your mind right now? And he made me lay out what was going on in my mind, what I was seeing in my mind, what I was, and then he said, okay, that's going on in your mind, okay? What's going on? in your body and he and he made me get really descriptive i won't get really descriptive here but he made me get really descriptive about what was going on in my body what being turned on felt like what like he got really uh descriptive with me and then he made me write it out he's like okay what's going on in your emotions what do you feel um and then he made me get really descriptive with that. And he he actually walked me through um, what, like, he actually made me lay it all out and, and bring it before him. And just, and that really helped me. So when I'm scared, and this doesn't only work for, uh, sexuality problems. This works for food. This works for everything. Because we we seem to take the way of escape. What when he says yes, he will provide a way of escape. But he doesn't want you to escape. He wants you to deal with whatever. He wants you to. Um, he wants you to. Uh, lay out what's going on. He wants you to, he wants you to be free most of all in your life. He wants you to be free and that's what the cross was for, to buy our freedom. But he wants you to be free in your own life and he wants you to know right now, today, that freedom is possible and free, freedom is available to you. So, guys, uh, th thank you for watching me today. 
I really appreciate it. I'll see you later. And if and if you feel a tug on your heart, um, if the Lord, if you sense uh, the Lord is calling you to to um, to Himself, um, just what I tell people. A lot of pastors pray after people, but what I tell people is He wants to hear you. Whatever. Whatever place you're in, what, wherever you are, he wants to hear you. And he wants to hear what's in your mind, will, and emotions, like I, like I was talking about today. So, um, he's, he's saying he wants to hear you where, wherever you are. And after you pour out your heart to the Lord, uh, he says, he says in the Bible, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. He wants to be a lifeline, a life raft for you today. So all you have to do is lay out what's in your heart with a sincere heart and believe and confess. It, listen, guys, and it may not be like I believe right now. It may be. It may be, um, I'm feeling a tug for what she's saying. I'm feeling something in my heart, but I'm not really sure. And that's okay. That's totally fine. That's totally fine to not be sure. Just a simple acknowledgement of that is so good. And he'll, he'll take you through a process. Of you not being sure. So after you laid out everything, and if you still are not sure, then you can message me here. I check my messages every day, so I will be sure to get back to you. Um, okay, guys, have a good day. Thanks. Tell me something, girl. Are you happy in this modern world? Or do you need more? Is there something else you're searching for? I'm falling. And all the bad times I feel. I sell love for change. Sorry. And all the good times I hear myself on for change. And all the bad times I hear myself. I'm up a deep and watches that I've I'll never meet the ground. Crash to the surface where they can't hurt us. They're far from the shallow now. The Lord wants to take us as the church from shallow to deep, but unless we kind of uh, master the rudimentary things of worship and of prayer and of the word. Um, it's impossible to go deeper until you learn the basics. 
So he wants the church to go deeper, but uh, we need to we need revelation on the basics first. And he's saying he's saying this whole two years was designed to take us into the deep. And he's saying, we're far from the shallow now. And he's saying, and he's saying, being far from the shallow is good. And he'll be, and he'll be there to take us the rest of the way. We don't have to do this as his bride alone. What husband leaves his wife alone to just swim on her own? Unless she wants to be. But he, he's saying that don't be afraid of this new level that he's taking us to. Don't be afraid of this new worship where we don't hide behind songs that we, but we use them as vehicles. And the primary source of worship is not a song, it's our voice. And he's saying, don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid to push in worship. Don't be afraid to go beyond what you, what you are used to because He's saying, we're far from the shallow now. And that's what I sent he's saying, it's, and it's just wonderful. So I'll see you guys later. Take care. In the shallow, shallow. In the shallow, la, 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 la. in the shallow, shallow, we're far from the shallow.